Hey guys, what's up? This is the Michael and the Seven here. Okay, guys, how you doing? Today I'm reviewing basically, as you know it, R.I.P.D. Rest in Peace Department. This is an action adventure comedy slash science fiction slash fantasy slash whatever. It's basically a combination of all genres, and a lot of people are hating it. Critics are giving it critics. Flixster has given it 12% actually on Flixster. So that means it must be really terrible, but I'm here to tell you that it's not terrible, because if it was terrible, I would have been upset, raging, and angry, which I am not, actually. I'm actually happy for this film, because I, really like, I really liked it, in my opinion, you know? And so this is directed by Robert Schwentenko. He did films like Flight Plan, he did films like Red, and this is his next film. I mean, I really liked Red. I mean, that film, he did a really good job of adapting a comic book to a movie. And this is his second chance. When this is this is also based off a comic book. So those people were saying it's a ripoff of Men in Black. Buzz off, because it's not a ripoff of Men in Black. I think it has its own cool ideas and its own cool premise. And I think that works it off for me. So the story is, let's first start with the cast. First, I always forget. It has Ryan Reynolds, Jeff Bridges, and Mary Louise Pro uh, Mary Louise Parker, who was also in the director's last film, Red. Basically, that's kind of a cool little. He adds just for the fun of it, I think, or you just wanted it because he enjoyed working with her. So the film is basically present time. So the film starts off with Nick's character, who's Ryan Reynolds. His character is a cop, a 15-year-old cop, 15-year cop who's worked in service for a really long time, and basically, basically he gets killed in a in a bus situation when he has to do a drug bus or something that's about criminals. Uh, killing people and doing droughts and stuff like that. He basically gets killed in the process and he dies. And he basically goes up this like vortex that's in the sky but no one sees him. And basically the proctor pulls him out to ask him if he wants to join the RAPD, which is the Rest in Peace Department. And the proctor is the main Mary Louise Barker. She has some funny lines in there. Basically messing with Jeff Bridges' character who's Roy. Now the proctor, who's Mary Louise Barker, as I said before, is basically give him a chance to basically still go back there by being an officer for to protect the living. And basically that means catching dead elves, which is the dead people that have not faced judgment yet. Which is basically do you go to hell or heaven or something like that. And basically this means that he gets a partner, which is Roy, which is Roy Cephas. But he is the he gets to be called Roy because sometimes it's hard to basically say the name. Just like Ryan Reynolds has trouble in the film, basically. Is a joke for the film, and it's really just a funny time. And Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds working as a team in this film is basically the best combination, I think. I mean, Jamie Foxx, Chain Team has a great chemistry as well. I think uh, Mark Wahlberg and Disney Washington has a good combination, but this is really a good combination with these two characters because it kind of has that feeling of Men in Black, even though I mean, there's an old old officer who is really know the basics, know the drills, everything. But we have a newbie who's a youngster. And he, can, and he knows a few things, but not that much. He's basically learning. So, yeah, it has little ideas for Men in Black, but it has a really different premise. I mean, Men in Black had aliens. This is dead people. Dead people who don't want to... Who don't want to stop? Uh, who doesn't want to stop living? And in this film, you don't have like all your mem all your identities erased. Instead, you basically have an avatar, a cl uh, basically a hidden person. It's like an entity. It's like something that's always guarding you. So you can't reveal yourself because you're not you anymore. You're basically someone else. You don't sound like you. You don't look like you. You basically don't smell like you anymore. You basically smell like it. You become a different person. So voice character the avatar is a young woman basically while Nick's character avatar is an old Japanese um Chinese man I say he basically is an old Chinese man and his weapon is a banana while the old the Roy Cephas' avatar weapon in disguise is a hairdresser uh, like one of those hair dryers not a mistake um, and basically the film goes around and makes a cool idea with that as in some scenes we see Roy Cephas fighting this person but in other scenes we see a young woman shooting these dead guys dead with a hair dryer which is kind of funny and it makes the film make laughable at some time because this moment is just funny I mean the writing in this film isn't really bad I mean it's written by the guys who wrote um Clash of Titans I know that film wasn't really bad but I think they improved on their writing from that film I mean the writing in that Clash of Titans wasn't really all good but it was okay enough to be a good film and this one is a little bit impro improving on that so I say good job on that really uh, I did not see the film in 3D actually I didn't get a chance to because there was no show timings of it at all 
And I gotta admit, the, this film I heard wasn't really doing good in theaters, but I saw a lot of people in the room that I saw it in, the theater room, and it was really packed. I mean, everyone was laughing, everyone was having a good time, and I think that's because of all the moments that happened in the film. I mean, all the performances is nice enough. I mean, Jeff Bridges is really funny. So is Ryan Reynolds. They did a good job with together as I said before. It's really the dialogue and the writing that really sells it for them to be like laughing at one another, smacking each other around, <laughs> punching each other, even though they don't hurt it. I mean, there's moments when Ryan, uh, Roy and Nick, they jump off on a uh, 90, like, a really hot tall building. They fall out the window, and they don't even die. They fall around, hit, 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 and fall. And that's it. They don't get killed. They don't die. Because you're already dead. So it's basically hard to kill them. The only way to do is basically shoot them in the head, really, with these cool guns and get to reload it once in a while. So it's kind of a cool premise and a cool idea, like I said before. But what about the actual story and how it develops? Because the story really goes into this evil premise where there's this device that will basically release all the dead people on Earth, and if that happens, Earth is lost to the humans, and then the dead deadites take over the entire world, really. It's like evil dead domination. And I was basically kind of cool because it, the film not supposed to take itself seriously. I don't think they're trying to make it too serious because it's just a fun film to laugh at. I mean, the action was really cool. Some of the scenes of action really cool. CGI, I could say, it's middle of the road. I mean, at times, it's really good. At times, it's really okay. It's just a little disappointing in one scene here or there. But that's it, really. No, the CGI was really terrible. It's not like it was a, 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 a sore thumb or a sore heel like I do. But, um, in my opinion, I think that the, the CGI was just fine for the film. I mean, it's, I had a feeling the CGI wasn't going to be amazing from the trailers. The trailers really pull you in for some reason. I mean, this trailer pulled me in and I really liked it. Um, really not much to say left about the film other than it's just a fun time. I mean, look at the user's review. Hopefully, they have some good reviews. But in my opinion, if... If you're one of the people that look in there, who have seen like all those films like Lone Ranger, White House Down, Pacific Rim, all those awesome films, then check this out. I mean, if it's on a cheap night, sure. I mean, I saw it in Puerto Rico, and the tick and we saw it for ch uh, cheap tickets. I mean, it was okay, but it was good. So overall scores, jeez. I mean, I can't give it too high of a score because this film really isn't that bad, but it's not really amazing. It's not the best film of the f summer. I mean, it's funny, but it's not the best comedy. I mean, in my opinion, this is the end. is the best comedy, in my opinion, so far. I mean, it was okay. But, overall, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. It's a fun film. It's, it'll make you laugh. It'll make you laugh more. It'll make you have those fun, awesome moments. And you're like, oh, yeah. If you see it on cheap night, good for you. It's good fun. If you see if you see 3D and all that stuff, it's your own risk. I mean, I haven't heard anything about the 3D so far. I heard the 3D is kind of in the middle of the road. There's some cool shots here or there, but that's it, really. It's kind of like some of those films that have those 3D shots that just convert it, really. Overall, RIPD is not that bad. I didn't expect it to be terrible. I expected it to be a fun fun ride. And by the end of the ride, I was satisfied with it. So, overall score, 7.5 out of 10. Um, if you guys have been following me on Twitter, I have seen Percy Jackson and the Olympians, um, CF Monsters in 3D. Uh, basically, uh, yesterday, I think. Yesterday it is. Yes. I put it on Twitter. So, I might do a review on that, depending on how I feel about the film. And I'll also be seeing Elysium tomorrow, which I hopefully might be doing a review that same day, or the day after, hopefully. I really need to, like, to catch up with films. I still have read two to review. I still have Percy Jackson to review, and then we're going to have Elysium to do. Uh, that's three movies. So, three more reviews will be coming soon. Hopefully, I could just catch right up to them. So, Good time, guys. Also, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Tell me what you guys think about the film. Do you think critics are being like Snoopy buttholes these days? They don't give a damn about films. They don't get, they don't be nice to some filmmakers I mean, out there. I mean, come on, seriously. RPD gets a 12, really? Percent? That really sucks, in my opinion. That's not fair. I think it's 12 or 14 percent. I don't know, but. Tell me what you guys think about Critics these days. Also, tell me if you guys actually saw the film. What do you think about it? Did you enjoy 3D or not? If you have seen the film in 3D. Because in my opinion, I'm a big 3D fanboy. In my opinion, I like 3D for some reason. I think it's like having extra glasses on, you know. Not these glasses. The 3D glasses. So, please like the video. Comment below. Subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. You know my name. DMACOLEN1987. Just like the same way it's spelled here. Thank you, guys. And peace out. And Red 2 will be coming soon. That review will be coming soon. Like I said before, there will be a few more reviews coming soon, hopefully. I'll be doing a review to guess too. Uh, that film's not out yet. 
But I will see it sooner or later, and then hopefully I can review that. I have a full... Full August is not... I hope... Just one more vacation. I just one more longer vacation, but... Happy with the one I got so far. So, peace out, guys.